Hello and welcome to part 3 of a series of tutorials covering the photographer's ephemeris on iPad. Today we're going to look at the visual search tools available in TPE for iPad. And to do that we're starting out in Sydney, Australia, where on this particular morning of Sunday, March 20th, 2011, there was a full moon at 5.10 in the morning. Let's say you missed that and you're wondering, when will the next full moon occur? We can use the tools here to determine that answer. Moon phase event simply lets you move from one event to the next. So if I click forward, the next event that occurs is the last quarter of the moon, followed by new moon, first quarter, and then back around to full moon, roughly on the 28-day cycle of the moon. And we can see then Monday 18th of April 2011, full moon at 12.43. So that's a very simple way that you can search from one appearance of the moon, the phase, to the next, backwards or forwards using this visual search tool. The next option here lets you search for particular sun alignments and what that refers to is the alignment of the sun at the point of rising or setting. So let's imagine a photograph that we might like to take here from the northern end of the domain within Sydney. There's Sydney Opera House with the bridge behind Let's imagine that we'd like a sunset shot with the sun silhouetting behind Sydney Opera House itself. To do that we can use the grey pin, drag it and drop it just behind the Opera House there, click visual search, choose sun alignment which we have, it shows us the bearing that's implied from the direction of the red line or the red pin rather to the grey pin and we simply click next and it finds that on Monday, May 16th, that's when the sun will be aligned at the point of setting right behind the Opera House, allowing you to get that shot. Pretty straightforward. The sun, of course, moves quite predictably, so we've probably got some days either side of this when a similar shot will work. You can see as I scrub forward there, the sun's gradually inching its way northward towards the middle of the southern hemisphere winter, but the movement is pretty slight from day to day. That's not of course the case with the moon and so using visual search for the full moon or new moon can be a lot more useful and allow you to find these particular alignments more quickly. Let's look at a particular example. I'm going to come out of the program for a second and show you a photograph that was taken in 2007. This you may recognize is London's Canary Wharf, the O2 or the, the Millennium Dome as it was known. This is the River Thames, we're looking west, full moon, setting in the morning, and there is the Thames flood barrier. What we're going to do is to look back at the particular date when this photograph was taken, work out where the moon was setting, and then use the program to find when we might next be able to take a similar photograph to this. What's the next date that would give us this, this outcome? I'll switch back to TPE. We're going to search for Canary Wharf. There we are. A little bit of setting up to do just to get the the locations correct. I'm going to take the red pin, drop it here on the south side of the Thames. There's the Thames flood barrier that you saw in the foreground of the image. There's the dome, the O2. Here is where the tall buildings of Canary Wharf are located. Now let's set the date when the photograph was taken. I know from the camera record it was taken in February 2007 and specifically it was on the morning of the 3rd. And this wasn't planned, this was before TPE existed. I'm sure there were plenty of other tools that could have allowed you to plan this shot but it wasn't. It was chance that we found the moon setting the way, the way it was. When we look here at the information you'll see a couple of important factors. First of all, sun rose at 7.35 the photograph was taken, let me set that correctly, to at 7.52 according to the camera. Use the fine adjustment to get that back there. There we are, 7.52. So we can see then that this was after sunrise by 17 minutes, before moonset obviously, and that the moon was waning gibbous. What that means is that this was the morning after full moon. Still almost full, but the morning after as it's now waning. So let's think through what we'll need to do to find the next date in the future when we can have this same alignment. First of all we choose full moon alignment and we have to specify a bearing using the 
secondary pin. And remember what we're looking for is not the position of the moon on the thin line, which is where it was before setting, because that's not what the search finds. We need to match another date when the sun sets in this direction, the thick line, the moon set line. So we drop the pin there. We come forward to today's date, because we want to see when we can do this in the future. Come to Visual Search and click Next. Let's find out what we get. It says no exact match, no full moon rise or set within plus or minus half a degree of this azimuth in the next two years. Best matches shown. For the moon, the program only searches ahead or back two years at a time in order to make sure that it can complete the search quickly and on the premise that you're probably not that worried about shots that can't be completed for multiple years. So let's see what we found. We've got a close match. It's setting a little bit further south of where we wanted, but let's see if the timing is right. Down here we see this is a 29th of October 2012, but this is on the day of full moon itself. And the way the search works, it will find either the exact day of full moon, or the day before, or the day after. Those are all three days when the moon is effectively a, a, appears full, certainly for the purposes of photography. However, on the day of full moon we see that the the moon is set at 627, but the sun isn't up till 648. So this wouldn't give us the same lighting conditions we had in the photograph that I showed you earlier. So let's search again, see if we can find a better match. Okay, that's that's an exact match on the direction. However, this time it's waxing gibbous, which means it's the day before full moon. And this time the timing is even worse. The moon is down at 553 in the morning, sun's not up till 716. So that's not really going to give us what we need. So we'll keep on searching. Again, waxing, full moon, full moon not an exact match, waxing, waning. Okay, this looks like it might work. It's not a precise match, but it's pretty close, so it'll probably give us what we need. It's waning gibbous, which means this is now the day after the full moon, and indeed there we have the moon setting at 8.10 in the morning, 8.11 in the morning, the sun having risen at 7.38, so that gives us a window of just over half an hour, and the alignment I think is good enough. So that means that the next time you could really recreate that photograph of the full moon setting over Canary Wharf and the dome, in a similar way, is probably around 2018, so some time away. So that gives you hopefully a flavor of how you can use the visual search tools to find the particular alignment, well, the particular phase of the moon, or the alignment of the sun, full moon, or new moon, in time given a certain bearing. Bear in mind that when you're using this, I didn't have to say that I was searching for moon set. That was implicit because of the direction of the line from the red to the gray pin sets in the west, rises in the east. So the program will work that out for you. So I hope this is useful in planning your photography of the sun and the moon. In the next tutorial we'll have a look at the elevation above the horizon functionality which is useful in some specific circumstances, particularly if you're based up in the mountains or looking out over the sea from a high elevation. And we'll do that in part four. Until then, thanks and goodbye.